Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we are going to talk about Redux as a state management tool for React applications. And to get started, um, the first slide is about why you probably should not use Redux. And the reason for that is if you have been watching all the videos in this series, we've been talking about, you know, UI state and server cache and specifically about using props, component composition, the context API and react query for your state management problems. And back in the days, Redux was mainly used to either prevent prop drilling or having like a centralized way of interacting with APIs. And then, you know, the new context API came out and libraries such as React Query emerged. And that was the point where a part of the community said, okay, let's try out these tools. And now a couple of years later, what you see is that a lot of people don't like to use Redux anymore. And maybe for good reasons, because if you're using Redux to prevent passing props down in the component tree or use it to solely like interact with an API, then I honestly do believe that component composition and context API is much better for the prop drilling problem. And React Query is just, you know, totally the better tool to interact with APIs. And if you start like, you know, asking people about Redux or, or start looking online, often things will come up like Redux is complex. There's a lot of boilerplate involved. You can have performance issues, which you can solve. But again, you know, some people feel burdened by having to solve those performance issues. Now, I don't think that those are, you know, all very good reasons because, you know, if you're talking about Redux being complex or, or it's easy to use it with the wrong mindset, you know, that's all up to the developer. You know, if you learn how to use it and how to use it properly, you won't have those problems. And, you know, if, if performance is a problem for you, there's a way to solve it. Um, if the border plate is a problem for you, then, you know, there's the, the Redux toolkit that, um, that, that definitely decreases like the amount of border plate you have to write in order for Redux to work. But to some degree, you know, I can also agree with these points because, you know, why use Redux if we have these other tools available that are much better in solving the problems you're trying to solve. And I can tell you straight away that in 99% of the cases of your state management problems, you will be able to solve them with those tools. But if you ever find yourself in a situation where you cannot solve it with those tools, then it's maybe worth to check for tools like Redux or Recoil or Jotai or Zustand. You know, there's like a lot of libraries out there that can help you with your state management problems. And if you'd like to get an idea of what such an example could be, you know, when context API or, or React Query is, is, is not enough, then I put a link in the description. It's a video created by uh, Dave McCabe, and he is explaining uh, why he needs to use the Jotai library for his state management problem. But again, those are, you know, like very rare edge cases. So I wouldn't, you know, spend too much time on uh, these things. Now, how does Redux work? As you can see right here on the right side, I have a flow diagram that I took from the Redux documentation. And this, you know, in a simplified way explains what Redux does, how it works. You have your UI. Right. So let's imagine this is a react component where the user can, for example, click on deposit $10. Now, when the user clicks deposit $10, that event then will be dispatched to the store. Right. And this is somewhat similar to what we've done in the context API. It has a type with, for example, a string deposit and a payload of 10. And then it will be sent to the store and that store is containing a root reducer, 
which contains auto reducers. And you can see those reducers as what we've done with the context API where you have like your switch uh, statement with uh, various cases. And then, you know, you might uh, change things based on the payload or uh, you might increase values or you might set them to a certain value and so on, right? It's up to you what you do in those reducers. But what then will happen is that the reducer will say, okay, the state currently is zero dollars. But then because we are dispatching that action with a deposit of $10 will cause the store to have now a value of $10. And then that state, which is being used by our React component will then be updated and will render $10 instead of $0. That's kind of like the loop you're seeing right here. And right here, I have a nice GIF. So you see, let's imagine the user clicks on deposit. That event is then dispatched as an action with a type of deposit and the payload of 10. And you will see that then the state is updated and thus our React component gets updated as well. That's pretty much it. And now you might wonder, okay, you're talking about like, why well, we probably should not use Redux, but why are you explaining it then? Because in the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Redux as a state management tool. And the reason for that is that there are still a lot of code bases out there that use Redux. There are still a lot of job positions that require you as a developer to know Redux to get hired. And, you know, I definitely don't think it's a bad thing for a React developer to have a good knowledge of Redux, but definitely don't stress too much about mastering Redux. You know, as long as you got a sense of what it does, uh, what it's, you know, intended to be used for and how to use it, you'll be fine. So having that said, um, thanks for watching and I'd like to see you in the next one.